Washington firefighters handed out thousands of Christmas gifts to grateful parents today. About 100 volunteers gave toys, board games, bicycles, and other gifts to more than 1,000 families. WKYT's Mike Linden talked to shoppers. Thank you. Merry Christmas. After a year's worth of planning, shopping day for the 83rd annual Fraternal Order of Firefighters toy program kicked off in Lexington today. More than 100 volunteers handed out toys, board games, bicycles, and many other holiday items to more than 1,000 families. When they leave here, they have a Christmas in a bag. They have everything from toys to stocking stuffers to books to stuffed animals, so they don't have to worry about going back out and buying something else. When they get home, they're ready to start wrapping their gifts and getting them under the trees. The way that the toy drive works is each shopper is given a certain number of tickets, each have with a different color, meaning a different kind of toy, whether it be for a boy or a girl. And it's as easy as walking up, giving a volunteer your ticket, and in exchange, getting a toy. I'm very overwhelmed, I'm excited, and I feel like I got more than what I was expecting, so it's awesome. Firefighters say helping the community is like helping their family, regardless of the season. It just warms you up inside. It really does. It warms you up inside, and and because you never know when you might be in that predicament that you might need help. Thank you, because all these toys and them, you know, giving their time and money or whatever that they did to help out, you know, thank you. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. I hope Mike gave that toy back. Firefighters have already started planning for next year's drive. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. It's a heinous crime. Someone planned this uh, to do what they did. No, no human should have been treated that way. We'll talk to the friend of a Lexington woman whose remains washed up in the Kentucky River. Plus, a man is fighting for his life after a car hit him. Police say the driver just turned himself in. And a Harrison County teenager dies on his way to take the ACT. WKYT News at 11 starts now. An honor student on his way to take a college entrance exam today died in a crash. Good evening, I'm Kristen Kennedy. The Harrison County coroner tells a 17-year-old Colton Lane Burris died this morning when his truck flipped over an embankment on Highway 3044 near Sadieville. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to neighbors on the road where that crash happened. He's at the live desk with our top story at 11. Harrison County Coroner Tom Ware tells us Colton Burris was an athlete and member of the Junior ROTC program at Harrison County High School. Burris was on his way to take the ACT when he crashed. It happened at about 7.30 this morning. His car flipped over the embankment here on Jacobs Lane. That's Kentucky Highway 3044. It's a quiet road, but neighbors say it also can be dangerous. We're told Burris was an honor student and ran track at Harrison County High. In a post on Facebook, Burris's mother wrote, quote, the light of my world was snuffed out. She continued thanking everyone for their thoughts, prayers, encouragement, and support, writing that Colton was an amazing son, grandson, nephew, cousin, and friend. Coroner Tom Ware says Burris accidentally lost control of his truck, which led to the crash. At the live desk, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. The coroner does not think drugs or alcohol played any role in the crash. A man is at UK Hospital tonight after police say a driver hit him. Lexington police tell us the victim was standing at a bus stop on Liberty Road when a car in the outbound lane hit him. The driver took off, but police say he later turned himself in. In a neighborhood not far from here, an individual called in and said that he had, uh, had been the driver that had struck the individual on the side of the road here. And so, again, we, we've made contact with him, but he isn't charged at this point. It's just, we're just, just now conducting the investigation. The victim went to UK hospital with life threatening injuries. Investigators found her arm and torso near the Kentucky River. And we were the first to tell you who those body parts belonged to. The Henry County coroner identified portions of Goldie Massey reported missing back in October. Massey is from Lexington and was last seen alive in Scott County. People who knew her say they can't believe anyone would do this. It's a heinous crime. I mean, it took talk. It, you know, someone planned this uh, to, to do what they did. No, no human should have been treated that way.
So far, investigators haven't made any arrests. Flames destroyed a home in Scott County this afternoon, and firefighters think a wood burning stove is to blame. Around 1 o'clock, firefighters say a house on Muddy Ford Road caught fire. They say the owners left their wood burning stove running while they went to visit family. No one was injured. The house is now beyond repair. Kentucky State Police found the body of a man while investigating a house fire late last night in McCrary County. Troopers say just before midnight, they went out to a home on South Highway 1651 in the Pine Knot community. They found 66 year old Johnny Taylor dead inside. They say he suffered multiple stab wounds. State police are also investigating two suspicious mobile home fires in Laurel County. The fires happened on Old State Road around 11 last night. State police believe the cause of both fires is arson. No one lived in either mobile home, and the two homes are relatively close to one another. The average temperatures are said to stick around for another day, and so are the clouds outside. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking some changes headed our way next weekend. Yeah, you're right. We're tracking a lot of stuff in between to set us up for the potential of some wintry weather by then. Right now, we look outside here in Lexington, and it's not bad at all out there. Anywhere you look, we're pretty clear and quiet. I mean, just at the surface, we have plenty of cloud cover right over our heads, though. Temperatures are running in the low 40s, and Lexington feels like temperature the same thing. We've got a wind coming in out of the south southwest around three miles per hour. That will help keep temperatures stable. That and the cloud cover through the overnight hours. I really don't think we drop that much more tonight. Maybe into the mid 30s in some cases out there. Other spots with our temperature map, you'll find some of the upper 30s and mid 30s out in eastern Kentucky, and they've been there a while though. So again, we kind of stay steady through the overnight hours tonight. We look at Defender, and it is quiet across Kentucky. We're scanning the skies. The next time we get some activity on here, likely happens on Monday afternoon into the evening hours as well. There you see that blanket of clouds hanging out with us tonight. Really not moving a whole lot. It's just hanging out right overhead. And it'll be with us tomorrow. And then we might catch a break before more changes come. And we'll take a closer look at that for you coming up in just a few minutes. UK took on UNZ inside Rupp this afternoon. A lot of fans worried they would stumble with Alex Poitras unable to play. Lee Kay Howard is here now with highlights from the big game. Hey, Lee Kay. Hey, Kristen. Yeah, two of college basketball's Blue Bloods meeting up at Rupp Arena today. Kentucky and North Carolina. Wildcats, like you said, without Alex Poitras following that ACL injury. But Trey Lyles would get the start in place of Poitras, and all he did was knock down the first jumper that he saw off the screen. Wildcats up six to four. Aaron Harrison would get hot near the end of the first half. First from the left side, and how about from the right corner? He hits back to back to back triples. Wildcats shoot 50% from the long distance in the first half and lead 49 34 at the break. Cats keep firing in the second half. Devin Booker off the screen. The lead is 19. Booker finished with 15 points. Coming off the steal, Tyler Eulis to Dakari Johnson with two hands. 64 46 Kentucky. Now, Marcus Page would come to life in the second half for Carolina. Finds himself open for three. It's back to a 10 point game. But Kentucky would pull away at the end. Trey Lyles to Willie Colley Stein. Yeah, he knows how to finish. And then off the rebound. Yeah, Colley Stein just has the entire court to himself. The emphatic one handed flush. Colley Stein scores 15. Alex Poitras likes what he sees. Make that 11 wins for Kentucky. 84 to 70. Rob Romley witnessed it firsthand, and we will hear from him and the Wildcats coming up a little bit later in sports. Thank you, Lee Kay. Protesters took to the streets in Lexington this afternoon right outside a packed Rupp Arena. They're part of a movement called Hands Up. About 20 people held up signs at Triangle Park this morning protesting two recent grand jury decisions not to indict white police officers in the deaths of black men Michael Ferguson and Eric Garner. Protesters say they just wanted their voices heard. Just to support the cause and be sure that our voices are heard here in Lexington, Kentucky, because police brutality, profiling, and all of those things happen everywhere. And we just want to raise the awareness of that here. Protesters also staged a die in at Fayette Mall where they lied on the ground this evening. Lexington firefighters are trying to make sure everyone has a Merry Christmas this year. We'll tell you about their annual toy drive coming up.